The room smelled of incense and ancient herbs, dimly lit by candles placed haphazardly on shelves filled with strange relics. The witch sat across from him, her eyes unblinking, and her voice low and haunting as she spoke of the power of desire. His heart raced with anticipation. Mark could not believe he had the audacity to visit the place after seeing the ad. Tabitha, the witch, will bring your love in a day. But he had tried everything to win over Anna, and nothing had worked. He had seen her in the office every day watching as she moved like a dream through his life, oblivious to his existence. So, out of desperation, he had come to the witch. I want her to love me. And with a slow, knowing smile, the witch handed him a small vial filled with a thick black liquid. One drop in her drink, and she will be yours. But before he could take the vial in his hands, she warned in a dark tone. Be careful what you wish for. The spell worked. Too well. At first it was everything he had dreamed of. Anna's attention was like a flood, washing over him in a way that felt intoxicating. She called him constantly, sent him sweet notes during work, and wanted to spend every moment by his side. It was a dream come true, but it didn't take long for things to spiral. The sweetness became suffocating. She started showing up unannounced at his apartment, waiting outside his door, watching for him when he wasn't expecting her. If he didn't respond to her calls or messages immediately, she would call again, and again, and again. His phone buzzed relentlessly, her presence growing more invasive with each passing day. She grew angry whenever he spoke to anyone else, especially women. Once he had a casual conversation with a female colleague about a project, and later that night, Anna was at his door, her eyes wild and furious. Why were you talking to her? I'm the only one you need. You don't need anyone else. Mark tried to calm her, tried to explain that it was just work, but Anna wouldn't listen. Her obsession was consuming her, and it began to consume him too. His friends and family grew distant. He couldn't even visit his parents without Anna following him, insisting on being with him every second. She was always there, always watching, always demanding more of him. He couldn't breathe. He needed to end it. One night, after weeks of suffocating under her obsessive control, he finally told her it was over. He had to break free, even if it meant facing her rage. Anna's response was far worse than he imagined. She laughed. It was a low, chilling laugh, devoid of the warmth that had once drawn him in. You think you can leave me? She whispered, stepping closer. Her eyes were darker than before, almost inhuman. You belong to me. He backed away, terrified of what she had become, but somehow, he managed to get her out of his apartment that night. He thought it was over. He was wrong. He went back to the witch. She had done it, so she could undo it. When he asked for the cure, she cackled in delight. Ow, poor soul, don't you know? There is no cure for love, but time itself. And she cackled louder and louder, her visage a devilish drunken scene. He ran away, scrambling through the door, fueled by fear and regret. But no matter how long it passed, Anna didn't leave him alone. She stalked him everywhere, at work, in the streets, even when he was at home, peering in through the windows like a phantom. His answering machine was flooded with messages, pictures of him taken from across the street, or from places she shouldn't have known he was, would appear on his door in unmarked brown envelopes. He changed his number, but she found it. He moved to a new apartment, but she was already there, waiting. Mark tried to move on. He met someone new, a woman named Sophia who was kind, smart, and everything he had hoped for in a relationship. Sophia made him feel safe again, like he could have a life free from Anna's madness. But Anna wasn't done with him. She never would be. One night, while he and Sophia were having dinner at his place, there was a knock at the door. The man froze. His heart pounded in his chest as dread settled in the pit of his stomach. Sophia looked at him, confused by his sudden fear, but he couldn't move. He already knew who it was. Anna. He opened the door slowly, his hands trembling. Anna stood there, drenched in rain, her hair plastered to her face, her eyes gleaming with fury, and something darker, something primal. I told you. You're mine. She said softly, her voice almost a whisper. He tried to close the door, but Anna forced her way inside, her strength far greater than it should have been. She shoved him aside and advanced towards Sophia, who stood frozen in shock. She doesn't love you like I do. She'll never love you like I can. The air in the room grew charged with Anna's madness. Mark lunged forward, trying to pull Anna away from Sophia, 
but she moved with unnatural speed, pushing him down with a strength that felt otherworldly. Sophia screamed. Anna grabbed her by the throat, her eyes burning with a terrifying intensity. You don't deserve him. He's mine. Before he could react, Anna pulled a small, sharp blade from her coat, its edge gleaming in the dim light. She raised it high, aiming for Sophia, her eyes wide with manic glee. The man threw himself at Anna, tackling her to the ground. The blade clattered away, but Anna didn't stop. She clawed at him, her nails digging into his skin, her mouth forming words of twisted love and hatred all at once. You'll never leave me. You belong to me. He fought to hold her down, his strength no match for her unnatural ferocity. For a moment her eyes locked onto his, and in that gaze he saw something truly monstrous, a darkness that had consumed her, a madness far beyond obsession. He knew then that this was not the woman he had once loved, but something much darker, something inhuman. Sophia rushed to help him, but Anna's strength was unyielding. She wouldn't stop, not until they were both hers, trapped forever in her twisted love. The man screamed for help as Anna's grip tightened and the world around him began to blur. The witch's words and cackle echoed in his mind, mocking him. 